Is she really Ruby? Hi everyone, hope you guys are having a nice time. Your boy Al is here with episode 5 review of Ashinoko season 2 so let's jump into it. At first we see Akane serves everyone a meal and then sits next to Aqua, internally promising to look after him. Later, Taishir, Aqua, and Akane head into Taishir's office, where Aqua departs. Taishir shows Akane some of Aqua's former acting tapes, and she understands why Aqua prefers his acting style. Taishir and Akane discuss this further. Eventually, Akane regroups with Aqua on the balcony and asks him why he pursues acting. Aqua refuses to answer, and Akane confirms she loves acting because it's fun. I take back everything I said about Aqua in my last video, because it's clear that he doesn't suppress his emotions, rather that if he tries to bring them out, his PTSD knocks him down, which is honestly a terrifying thing. Also it seems Aqua is warming up to Akane for some reason. We see Akane push Aqua to reveal what drives him to act. Aqua asks what she'd do if he pursued acting with murderous intent. Akane tells Aqua she'd assist him and explains why. At the same time, Akane wants Aqua to help her outshine Kana in the Tokyo Blade stage play. Aqua understands. They regroup with Taishir and ask for advice. Taishir tells Aqua he must pursue emotional acting since Abiko and Goa's script requires it and promises to help him achieve that. Meanwhile, Ruby and Minami greet Melt. Ruby asks about Aqua's whereabouts since he hasn't returned home on time. Melt mentions Akane, which prompts Ruby to consider texting him. Minami suggests leaving Aqua and Akane alone, but Ruby argues Aqua wouldn't do anything reckless that would get a girl pregnant. This is the second time Akane gave me goosebumps. The first was during season 1 when she copied Ai, but this time she legit scared me. I mean she straight up said she would help Aqua to kill someone without even thinking for a second, which is really scary. However, it also shows how Akane feels for Aqua. Also Ruby is pretty dumb at times. Next we see Ruby say if Aqua did something reckless, she'd despise him. Nonetheless, she knows he wouldn't do that and decides to drop her pursuit of the truth. Ruby asks Mel to escort her to the women's restroom, leaving Minami alone. Then, Kamashita arrives and tries to flirt with Minami. Mel returns and tells Kamashita that Kendaichi wants to speak with him. Kamashita understands and heads to an undisclosed area with Melt. Melt explains why he lied to Kamashita, and Kamashita responds with mean-spirited comments about Melt's acting skills before leaving him alone to contemplate his remarks. Ruby returns to Strawberry Productions and tells Memcho and Kana she got Kamashita's line ID. Kana explains why that's a terrible idea and blocks Kamashita from Ruby's contacts. This is probably the first time I have seen Ruby get so angry, and it made me realize she holds a very deep grudge against her father just like Aqua, and it makes sense given what he did to them. Also there hasn't been a complete scumbag of a character in this anime yet, so I wonder if there's more to Kamashita as a character. Moving on we see Kana, Akane, and others are in the dressing room at Rida stage around play theater. Kana and Akane engage in a playful argument. During their argument, Kana shows Akane a pamphlet containing one of Akane's old interviews. Kana reveals she inspired Akane to pursue acting. Taiki admits he was the one who informed Kana about Akane's old interview. Akane confesses she used to adore Kana but dislikes her now for several reasons, which she lists to Aqua to help him understand. As Akane and Kana bicker more, Melt and Aqua pull the girls aside. The bickering between Axne and Kana was damn hilarious, and the commentary from Aqua and Melt made it even funnier. Also it's cute how both the girls admire each other yet can't stand each other at the same time. Then we see Akane share more grievances about Kana, then drops the rant and suggests she and Aqua head to the rehearsal area. Meanwhile, Kana explains her behavior around Akane, admitting Akane is her fated rival and insisting Akane will never surpass her. She approaches Akane and intimidates her during rehearsal. Taiki opines on the situation, acknowledging both Kana and Akane's talents but asserting Kana will prevail because she has him as her partner. 
Nonetheless, everyone prepares for the stage play. I agree with Taiki that both Akane and Kana have their own strengths, and both love acting in their own ways, but Taiki is underestimating Aqua too much, and that will obviously be his biggest mistake. Also, Aqua's childhood memory of Kana was hilarious. At the end we see Abiko and Yuriko arrive at the Tokyo Blade stage play. Abiko is nervous, and Goa, sharing her concerns, tells her that everything depends on the performer's success. Memcho greets Yuki and the others from Sweet today. Ruby and Miyako are also at the play and spot Taishir in the audience, believing Aqua invited him. Taishir looks at the stage play's pamphlet, hoping Aqua will give it his all. After Akane and Kana exchange words, Aqua, in the dressing room, confirms he hasn't controlled his inner emotions but plans to give it his best shot. Seeing Aqua like that was kinda sad, but it's good that he is finally trying to overcome his trauma and move forward with the help of his friends. Also it was nice to see all the characters from the reality show ARC reunite. Overall this was a great episode that showed us new sides of Aqua and Akane. I'm guessing this arc will end next episode, and Aqua and Akane will outshine everyone. Anyways thanks for watching everyone. If you like my video then check out some of my other videos. Also don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel or leave a comment if you want to say something, you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram or check out my Facebook page, links are given in the description until then see ya.